There are two wars going on in the Middle East. One fought with weapons and another fought with words. So to look at how this media war is playing out, I invited two of the smartest people I know on this issue who happen to be polar opposites. Rula Jabril is a journalist and author, a Palestinian who happens to speak fluent Hebrew and has a Jewish husband. And Elliot Abrams is a veteran of Republican presidential administrations. Most recently, he was a deputy national security advisor under George W. Bush, and he's currently at the Council on Foreign Relations. They joined me here in studio to discuss. Rula Jabril, Elliot Abrams, thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Pleasure. You all look at the same news coverage of this conflict and I think see two different things. So I'm hoping we can uh, find some middle ground perhaps in this conversation. Rule, let me start with you. When you see coverage of what's happening uh, in Gaza and in Israel, what do you see? What bias do you see? Definitely we shy away on challenging the Israeli narrative of what's going on in the ground and what's the end game. I don't see that. Um, I see basically the Israeli narrative of this is a war that they had to go into <clears throat> being challenged by the visuals. It's one thing to hear the speeches and even to agree with them. But what you're seeing on TV, of course, a lot of damage, a lot of death, uh, injuries in Gaza makes it very hard, uh, I think, for viewers to weigh this because, you know, you've got sort of one part of your brain is listening, but another part is looking. On CNN International this week, Christian Amanpour's program, she had on the New York Times Jerusalem Bureau Chief Jody Redoran. Let me play the clip of what Jody said on that program. A lot of the international condemnation uh, of Israel during this war has really backfired here, made people just feel like nobody understands them. Many people here feel like nobody understands them. Is it possible for that to be true, but therefore also to be a pro-Israel bias in the American press, as you say there is? Look, I, I believe that Israelis think that most of the world, if you don't agree totally with them, you don't understand them. But I think as friends and, uh, and as allies, we need to challenge destructive policies. I think the destructive policy of the last 45 years in the West Bank didn't lead anywhere. And the last eight years in Gaza didn't lead anywhere. So you have to explain to me, and maybe Elliot can help us in this, and I hope <laughs> he can, in explaining what do we want to do and what Israel wants to do with the millions of oh. Arab Palestinians that are sitting there? You don't want to give them citizenship and you don't want to give them sovereign state. So what is the end game? The end game that we'll see these cyclical the, violence happening over and over. You wrote in the Whitley uh, Center this week a, mm. a piece called The Long War with Hamas. Well, the problem is, it's, 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 again, it's easy to say, you know, what's the answer? Why isn't Israel for a two-state solution? The problem is that Hamas is not for a two-state solution. You can't, make believe, no, you can't make believe that Israel can deal with the Palestinian Authority as if there's no Hamas. There is a huge terrorist group here pledged to the destruction of Israel. No, you want to when keep you the talk about, quality, When you talk about different. demilitarizing Gaza, you need to come up with a reasonable plan to do that, or else it's just a silly slogan. What can we agree on? What are the facts that everyone involved agrees on? Do we agree, and I hope you and I can agree, that Palestinians, millions of Palestinians, deserve either sovereign state or citizenship? Do we agree on this? Oh, I would agree on that, but only if and when Israelis can have safety and security. I agree. That's okay. coupled with safety and security. There we go. Peace in our time. We agree on this. <laughs> can we please agree that, and I hope you will write something about it, that if Israel really totally demilitarized, like they did in the West Bank, can they seal an agreement with moderate Palestinians? I'm not sure what you're asking. Is it possible for there to be agreement between the Palestinian Authority and Israel? Yes, there is. But, but why there's it a didn't big, happen? It's it didn't been a happen. negotiation for the last uh, yeah, six years. Yeah, I, I will tell you why. Because Please. neither Yasser Arafat at Camp David... No, but we don't have nor, Yasser Arafat no, 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 six years ago. Neither now Yasser Arafat at Camp David Abbas. nor Mohammed Abbas after Annapolis would sign an agreement. You know that Barack offered, you know that Olmert offered, and they would not sign an agreement. That's the problem. But you have but a bigger problem Kerry, now. Kerry, Kerry asked them is, to sign now. Abu Mazen was willing. He was not the, willing. The, Come on. He was willing. He was not willing. He was willing. The bigger but when problem you see now, that, 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 when you see that your settlements that were 60, 20, 60 settlements 20 years ago today are 200 with one million. I, I, I must say, I don't think this has anything to do with the fact that there is a murderous terrorist group in Gaza trying to kill as many Israelis as they can. those came in the last and eight you years. No, you can't cancel Hamas the last 55 the last, years. Hamas, Hamas did not come in the last eight years. When you say, well, they should be disarmed. Do you agree that and the, the, let me the Palestinian Authority the international Hamas community in will do it. The international community is not going to disarm Hamas. You know the, the main thing that really separates us? You are convinced that because that there is... That you're a man and I am a woman? No, that because there is a problem here. So if we were smarter and we listened to each other, we would solve it. 
I don't think that's right. There are some problems that are so difficult, and the problem of, frankly, Islamic terrorism in the Middle East today, whether it's in Syria, ISIS, or whether it's, in, it's Hamas in Gaza, we don't have a solution, and we're not going to have one tomorrow. And I do want to go back to the first point you made, which is that visuals matter. Uh, there, are, um, there have been complaints for a number of weeks now that what we don't see from Gaza are the Hamas militants and, and, uh, and up-close views of their attacks on Israel. It's hard to show, obviously, but there are other things that are not being shown. Israel has a field hospital at the Erez crossing serving Gazans. Nobody shows that. Israel has sent, during this war, more than 1,300 truckloads of food and medicine into Gaza. You, people could show that. You could talk to the truck driver. Is that a fair critique, that, is not that we're not seeing that humanitarian effort enough? I think when, when the big store, and we work in the media, and of course, when you have a story of bombardment of schools, UN schools, where, where kids are dying and died, and, and a bombardment of a market, between that story and a humanitarian truck, what are you going to show? Both. In, I think we need, I think we show both, but I think the relevance is the human suffering. When you look at the casualty figures, you're going to see, you can see it now, a vastly disproportionate number of the people that the Israelis have killed are men between the ages of 17 and 30. Well, why would that be? Because they're targeting soldiers of Hamas. I don't think yes, schools are, are soldiers. I agree. And I don't think of course they're not. Soldiers, and mis but and, I know one thing. And they make mistakes. And we made them in Iraq. And we made them in Afghanistan. And every army makes them. But these are two them. different things. This is they're not two American different things. wars. And this is an Israeli war. You can't every, connect them two together. I can this tell is not you even, that every, not even right for the Israelis or for the Americans. Army, every army makes mistakes. Do you think the United States didn't accidentally kill civilians in Afghanistan? I by think the the Israelis are not accidentally killing them. Oh, I think now there's a collective. They're murdering children on purpose. I this think is what you're saying. I you really think there that? is disproportionate force that's been used to, to, to hit Hamas, but I think in the end, Look, many civilians me, will be casualties. 10%. We know that. It's 10%. not a mistake of the population of Gaza. 10% are men between 17 and 30, and they are 44% of the casualties. I hope when you go back and you write about it or you meet the Israeli officials, tell them one thing. If this policy will not change, us moderates in the Middle East will disappear. And Hamas and extremists, and even worse than Hamas, will come, will come across. Well, and I'd this like is a tragedy. Worse than Hamas is a hard concept to deal with right now. When they are attempting with their rockets to kill only civilians. They're not even rocketing Israeli bases. They're rocketing Israeli cities. They are trying to kill civilians. That's their only goal in this war. Can we agree that it's sad that you all were on CNN together two years ago on Fareed Zakaria's <laughs> program talking about this same topic? This is and really sad. Again. And the fact that we're not even, not only finding solutions, questioning or challenging the officials to find solutions. We're talking about the emergency, the human catastrophe, the shelling, but not solutions. Well, there is some small agreement about the sadness of it, at least. Jabriel, Elliot Abrams, thank you thank both you. for joining me. Thank you for having us.